Okay, let's talk about now field manipulation, okay? So this is still where in post-processing. So when we talk uh, about field manipulation, it's computing new fields for the ones that already exist, okay? That I fields. Already sell something like that when we use that function object vorticity, vorticity is something derived from velocity. So this is what we're going going to, to see here, okay? So we already saw that one, but we're going to restudy again now in more detail. So remember that we use the post-process utility minus fun and the name, okay? So here you put list and I'm just going to give you the list of all of them available. So these are fields that you can post-process, visualize, okay? But also there are some of these function objects or fields, quantities, better that to run it you need to use the name of the solver or you need to put a name of the solver why because you need to access the database library you need to access stuff like information about turbulence model thermo th thermo thermophysical properties and so on okay so there are some of the function objects that you will need to to give this information my advice is to always execute it like this okay so sometimes you try to execute one like this it will give you an error a warning it's better to go like this and you avoid that problem okay so remember always when you use the auction post process you are just going to run this, these utilities, these monitors, these function objects. You are not going to run this solver. Okay. My advice is, is to proceed like this. And probably we're going to see here one case that it will give you a problem when you do like this. In particular, stuff like wall shear stress and things like that is going to give you problems. So if you type post process minor list, you're going to get that list. Also, you can have post process minus help. Okay, simple form minus post process help, and you can get that information and always have the phone info. Okay, this post processing utility, okay, is located here. Okay, so you go, this is an utility, and you go into this folder. There you have the source code. Okay, you can see what is happening there. Okay, and here, remember, you have the function object. So these are different things. Okay, so these are those small programs that compute those quantities. This is something that you're going to do to do some sampling or compute derived, derived quantities, but this can access these function objects, okay? So let's go to this case and let's do some, some manipulation, field manipulation. So what we're going to do is that we have this case, supersonic case, and by default, this is going to compute just U, P, and T. But what about Mach number, total pressure, divergence of velocity, or the numerical shadow graph, which is the divergence of, dan of density gradient? How do we compute this? So we're going to compute, do, we need to do field manipulation, okay? We can use, there are some functional objects that it will do this. There are, sometimes you, you cannot use functional object, it doesn't exist. You need to use the post-process utility. And sometimes it doesn't exist a lot at all so maybe it's better to do it using part of you okay so all all this stuff you can do it as well using part of you so let's run this case and then after running the case here you have these steps okay so see that in all these cases i always using the auction the name of the solver minus post process minus function fun and then the function again mac number current number wall share stress this one is to compute raw for this specific time, the vorticity. So these are equivalent, but my advice always run like this. And here also executing a specific, no external function object. So you have your explanation here. And here it seems to get a little bit more complicated. So see that, for instance, you want to compute the gradient of a field that already exists, the field next to exist. See that you have this function here. Grad means gradient. Grad and the variable for it can be grad u, grad p, whatever, and it's computing the gradient. Here, component of u is going to decompose in components. You can get the magnitude, the magnitude of square, you can get total pressure like this, divergence of u, the magnitude of grad of u, okay? So you have everything like this, okay? See, so these are some, some examples. It's important that, for instance, if you want to compute the divergence of u, you need to define in, in SV skin, some of these quantities, you will need to define in SV skin, you will need to define how to compute. So see here that you have the comment. So because you need to take to tell how to discretize. Okay, so be careful, same for gradients, you can 
you need to tell how to discretize, discretize gradients. But if you use the default options, there is no problem. Okay, so be careful. Some of the, these options require adding something in SV schemes. And here you have these also that are very handy. Okay, so see that it's not only deriving quantities, but also you can compute like, the average in a patch. And this is the syntax, okay? Like this, you have many, many, many other options. Now so you have average, patch, average, patch, integrate. Choose the variable and put it there, okay? So let's see this in, in action, okay? So you have this case, let's move always in 101 post-processing, supersonic wedge, and let's run. By the way, you have here a supersonic case. Okay, so you want to look at the input files and everything. You can explore what is happening there. So let me go into system and see that I'm going to open control D and see that I, we have here a lot of functional objects. They are all commented or most of them. So see that I'm commenting. I'm not computing mass flow. Okay, so it's the one you can compute it. Just erase the comment, fin average, fin average, I know. Com Computing, so see that you have vorticity, the minimum and maximum for me is always a trademark. So see that minimum and maximum. So you know that some quantities are strictly positive bounded or there are some upper limits. So you always control that when you got that <coughs> that information on the screen, which is not plotted by default in open phone. And also you use com have used commercial software also. They are not plotted by default. You need to define those quantities. But my advice always always plot that and here I'm using the extended form or the expanded form the long one and then <clears throat> we have uh, no, nothing okay external function object is you want to call an external one and see the in this one we are computing gradients a posteriori so see this is the way how how you you use it so the type is gradient library the field that you want to use so we're using raw density and the result you can also force the name so you do like this you are forcing to have this name this is optional so by default it will call it grad raw and as you put this keyword this is the name that it's going to give so see the divergence this is how you do it again this is optional okay but remember that you need to define the divergence so it's like i open sb skins see that i added this keyword for grad raw See that you have it there for grad raw and divergence of u should be bam 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 here. Where is the f u? I don't see it here. Okay, so let me put this space there. And also this one. So you need to tell how to discretize those quantities. Okay, many of those quantities, uh, it will ask that. If you don't put it, it will give you an error. We're going to see that. I'm going to show you that. So see that we have a, short, a solution. Okay, let me show you this solution. Okay, and see that you can access your primitive fields. Okay, but then from this, you need to access much more. Okay, so we already compute here. Let me open the dictionary the script the automatic script and see that this script now is going and computing everything so see that you have run the simulation okay and see here compute mac number okay so see that now we have that field that is derived now from velocity and properties of the working flow current number wall shear stress this one compute density compute k k is the is the work in in the energy equation is a variable that you have in energy equation vorticity so two ways to compute the vorticity and it's better to comment this one okay so my advice always compute this using the name of the solver minus post process and then this is the a posteriori function object is running this one okay and here you have some other options so here so you want to compute the gradient of the field components of a field, magnitude of a field, you put it like this, total pressure, divergence. So as you go into the solution here, you will see that the magnitude, the components of U, see that it will decompose like this. You can do it also for, for wall shear stress that is a vector and sometimes you have tensor. You can also do it for a tensor and it will decompose everything. Okay, so you have my old quantities here, you have total P, Okay, diff u, grad u, diff gradient. So see that you have it here. See, 
gradient of row, gra row and then in the external function object, I, I define there, I told the, the function object, save it like this and see that you have the name there, okay? So if we keep reading here, and then you have these final ones that is to compute the that quantity there, you now the, the patch average and so on. I want to show you this and what happened here. So let's see that. Okay, let me close here and let me run this without the solver. So like probably Mac number it will run. Okay, so I actually see that it's not running. Mac number failed to execute. Okay, so you have to care for you see that it is not executing here you need to give to execute here oh, minus day this time you need to in this case you need to go row pimple phone man and see that now it's working and it's not executing because this in particular it needs to access this thermophysical variable Okay, so to compute that one, it needs to access this information. And by default, post-process does not access that. So when you tell, tell the solver, then when you are using the solver auction, that is accessing all your databases, okay? The same would be for wall shear stresses. If I would recall, let's say, this one is you run without this auction, see that unable to find turbulence model in database okay so it needs to access that so you need to force you need to use this auction so be careful with this okay so see that now you have it so that's what i say that it, my advice is always to to run like this okay so you see that in, in the case of vorticity you need to to do that so it will compute it so in that way or in this way it will work okay but not all of them okay are safe only with the post process. So always try to do like this. Then you have this one, so you can compute. So in this case, it's not accessing any database. It's just from the variables that already exist, it's computing gradient. So for instance, we already have a variable there. So let's see what variables we have. So if you want to compute a new gradient, let me see T, gradient of T. You go here, T. And there you go. And the name of the variable will be grad t. You have it there. Okay, so that's all. So you have grad components, magnitude, mag square. You have many, many of them. So as you go here, list, you're going to see what you can use. So see that you have current, lambda, mag number, peclet, q, okay, add, h, many of them. These are the ones to compute cell maximum and minimum value components divergence so there are many many implemented here okay so it's up to you to pick up one so here probably put the ones that i use most of the time and in particular in this case when you compute the gradient of row this is equivalent to a numerical leading and as you compute the laplacian of row which is the divergence of the gradient remember laplacian is divergence of the gradient that is a numerical shadow graph that you can use it now to detect chalk wave and stuff like that okay so this is it now how you compute this these fields okay and let's visualize that which by the way all these data fields you can also compute it in paraphon okay or in part of you it's up to you so let me go here let me access all fields here and for instance let me go here gradient of raw okay and see that this one is telling you where you have the chalk wave or the other is the divergence of gradient of rock. So you have their location, you have T, okay, and so on. A Mac number, let's see what happens. Uh, okay, you have the evolution there and you have all your fields, density. So for instance, let's say that I want to compute the gradient of row in part of you. You have here filters, alphabetical, gradient of instructor data set and just go here select this color ba uh, variable raw give it a name so i would call it g gr okay apply and you have it here gr 
gradient of rho and if you compare with gra rho should be something similar okay? there are some differences but very similar okay so not necessarily you need to go through uh through open phone to compute okay but if you can do it in open phone do it but there are so many many stuff that you cannot do in open phone so have in mind that you can obtain you can get that using part of you okay so this is part of us another video this is a so supplement to show you how to use part of you but here you can do very complex things in part of you okay so you have here a calculator that you can compute new quantities okay and so on so that's all for this this video okay and let's say for the most important things of of, of post processing we have another one just to show you something about ascii and binary data and we are done with this part of post processing Okay, so thank you and see you in the next video. Bye.